Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. And we begin tonight with that new and concerning case of the coronavirus here in the United States. A patient in California this time with no apparent ties to China or anyone who traveled there testing positive. Tonight, the hunt now for the source. How did she get it? And this new case raises troubling issues tonight. Why did it take four days to test the patient? And dozens of medical workers who cared for her are now being closely watched. California's governor, Gavin Newsom, tonight saying his state is monitoring some 8,400 people who traveled to infected parts of the world, but that California has just 200 test kits. That woman lives in the same county where Americans are being quarantined after coming back from China, but again, they do not know how she got it. Now trying to retrace this invisible line of transmission. So we begin tonight with ABC's Will Carr in California. Tonight, there's an intense search in California to find out if the novel coronavirus is spreading through this community. Authorities are trying to find everyone who came into contact with a Solano County woman after she tested positive. They're contacting any individuals who might have been exposed and they're isolating them. Tonight, her case is believed to be the first spread through her community. The problem, since she had not traveled to the hot zone and did not know anyone infected, even after being placed on a ventilator at a local hospital, she was not tested for four days after showing symptoms. Do residents need to be wearing masks right now? We do not believe so. But experts say valuable time has been lost. Every single delay in testing means potentially the virus could go to hundreds or thousands of more people. At this point, authorities say there are no connections to nearby Travis Air Force Base, which has housed Americans under quarantine. But tonight, a new whistleblower complaint raising questions about the safety of those workers assigned to the quarantined Americans. The New York Times and Washington Post are reporting federal employees worked without proper training or protective gear at March and Travis Air Force bases. The Secretary for Health and Human Services was asked about the workers today. To your knowledge, were any of the ACF employees exposed to high risk evacuees from China? They should never have been without appropriate PPE. What's PPE? That's a personal protective equipment. Tonight, at least 33 people, most flown into the states, have tested positive in California. Another 8,400 are being monitored after trips overseas. Testing and Governor Gavin Newsom says the state is running out of kits uh, to urgency. test for the virus. Uh, we have just a few hundred testing kits in the state of California, and that's surveillance testing as well as diagnostic testing. That's simply inadequate. The CDC has pledged more in the coming days. In a matter of weeks, the virus has spread to every continent but Antarctica. Japan has closed all schools for a month. In South Korea, there are now drive through testing facilities. Back home, if the virus spreads rapidly, the CDC is telling Americans to be prepared to stay at home with two weeks worth of food and medicine. And with masks in high demand, experts warn they won't protect healthy people from getting the virus. Anyone who does not have a respiratory illness, meaning a cough or a sneezing, should not be wearing any type of mask. Yeah, they're really concerned about this. They want folks who are actually sick to wear the masks instead. And Will Carr joins us now from outside that hospital tonight. And uh, Will, we know some of those hospital workers who came in contact uh, with this patient uh, has, have also been quarantined? That's right. A number have been asked to self-quarantine, to stay at home, check their own temperatures, and report in if they show any symptoms. Everyone else across this region is considered low risk tonight. David. All right. Will Carr leading us off tonight. Will, thank you. This new case, of course, brings a whole new set of questions. Why did it take so long for the patient to be tested for coronavirus? So let's get right back to ABC's chief medical editor, Dr. Jen Ashton, who is with us here tonight. And Jen, first of all, that new patient in California, uh, particularly because she's in the county where they brought Americans back from China who are being quarantined. Uh, Quarantine. Was it alarming to you that, that it took four days? Well, that's alarming, but this case is significant because it represents the first case of human to human transmission in the community. If we were to see a lot of that, David, it would meet criteria for a pandemic. In terms of the time, that is problematic, and I think doctors were just tr trying to follow the previous recommended guidelines on who should be tested. The key difference about this case no direct ties to China. She didn't know anyone that had been to China, and that's why they're so alarmed about community uh, spreading of this. In the meantime, the testing of coronavirus. We heard Governor Newsom say they have 200 test kits, wondering if people have flu symptoms, why they're not just testing for coronavirus as a precaution at this point. Well, we're seeing some change just recently, David. The CDC revised their testing guidelines to now include anyone with flu-like symptoms and a history of recent travel now to these five countries, China, South Korea, Italy, Japan, and Iran. 
But even tonight as we come on the air, David, tests from Massachusetts and New York still have to be sent down to Atlanta. So they're going to have to ramp this up and quickly. Those tests still being sent to Atlanta to be tested, not a rapid response. Exactly. All right, Jen, thank you. We continue to follow the economic fallout as well tonight. The Dow falling nearly 1,200 points, the largest single-day drop, point drop ever. The Dow losing 1,190 points, down another 4.42%. And the sixth day of losses. It's been the worst week since the financial crisis in 2008. Let's get right to ABC's chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, at the New York Stock Exchange. And Rebecca, we were watching all day today, and I wanted to bring up what, what we heard from Goldman Sachs today, their forecast that the coronavirus could, could wipe out all corporate profit growth for 2020. That's right, David. What Goldman Sachs is saying here is that the biggest companies in the United States might not grow this year because of the coronavirus. And we heard from Marriott, who warned this could negatively impact their results. We've heard from numbers of major U.S. corporations, from Apple to Nike to Microsoft to United Airlines, saying that this virus will impact negatively their results this year, David. All right, Rebecca, this next question is really an impossible one to answer, but I'm sure folks at home with 401ks and watching the effect on the economy are going to want to know when will the markets calm down. I know they take into account, they forecast what's coming months ahead. So when does that catch up? Because we're just starting what it seems to be uh, this story of coronavirus. That's so true, David. And, and the biggest question on Wall Street's mind tonight is how long and how severe will this outbreak become? Because as U.S. consumers watch these headlines and make choices about their travel, about dining out, about spending time in public places, all of that has economic consequences. And the longer the outbreak lasts and the more dire those decisions become, if they do go down that path, the worse it becomes for jobs and the U.S. economy, David. All right, Rebecca Jarvis tonight. Rebecca, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.